here? You need to ditch this vanilla room. I'm here to show you a better place to die. In fact, the perfect location. Check out our fabulous suicide tour. <laughs> Golden Gate Bridge. 700 foot drop to immediate death. Imagine the mark you'll make. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, to domestic? All right, let's go international. Tour Eiffel. Un mort tragique et très sexy en France. Oh, Ooh, you don't like height. Okay, then. How about ah! Siberia? Ooh, minus 80 degrees. Die of hypothermia. <laughs> oh, cold isn't your thing. Immolation! <laughs> Drowning at Niagara, eh? Eaten by a shark? Crushed by Big Ben? New York, Egypt, Sapuku? <laughs> How about Rocky Railway? Beautiful, majestic, breathtaking. You ready? Oh, just imagine the splat. Here we go! Here we go! No, oh, I don't want to die! <gasps> no. I want to live. I think I... I think I want to see the world. Oh, well, if you change your mind, call me anytime. Thank you. Have a good life. Hi everyone and welcome to the 2021 Rookie Awards interview series. My name is Christina Ryan and I'm a texture artist at Industrial Light and Magic in Sydney. Um, I'm also a judge for the rookies and the host of this new interview series. Uh, so each week we'll be introducing one of the winning artists from the 2021 Rookie Awards. We'll hear a little bit about their backstory, what inspired their entry, and we'll also see some behind the scenes content. So we'll let them take the reins and share their screen and see some never before seen workflows. Um, so make sure you stick around for that. And uh, we'll be keeping this pretty casual. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to pop them into the chat and we'll do our best to answer them. Um, so about, without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce uh, Manika Tamara. Hi. Hello. So nice to have you. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, so Manike here was the runner-up, um, the very talented runner-up of our 3D animation film of the year competition. Um, her entry, uh, Final Destination, um, was, I mean, you guys just saw it, it was absolutely incredible um, and created all by herself, which, you know, I not normally film of the year is like a group competition and, you know, you tackled this whole thing by yourself. So well done. You should be really proud of that. Thank you. Um, so I th thought we'd just start things off. Um, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so uh, yeah, my name is Marika Tamura and I'm originally from Japan. And uh, I'm a visit artist currently working at Leica. And so I live around Portland, Oregon. So, and I just graduated Ringling College of Art and Design uh, in May. And so, before my current job, although like I do BizDev right now, um, I also like learned all the CG pipeline and storyboarding as well. Awesome. But, yeah. And um, it was my thesis film. Yeah. And um, what's, what are you up to now? You were telling me that, you know, you've just finished your internship. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, what I'm doing, right? Yeah. So, I mean, like, what, when you did an internship and then now are you able to say where you're working at now? Oh yeah. Uh, so um, I just finished my internship like last week or so. And then yeah. now I'll be like a junior prop designer at Leica. So we'll be a full-time, yeah. Full-time gig. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, thank you. So what sort of work, I mean, you mentioned that you'd be doing prop design. Um, are you able to share, mm -hmm. you said some really interesting um, style of animation you'd be doing there? Yeah, so at Leica, um, they do the stop motion animation. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really fun to see like um, when we design stuff, like the sets are actually like built like by hand. 
So um, oh. they do like mixture with like CG and stop motion. And yeah, so like it's been really interesting and new experience. Okay, and I can imagine. Yeah, actually, like um, a few days ago, they announced a new film uh, they're working on, uh, on like each social media, um, and it's called Wildwood. So yeah, um, it's been fun to see like people reacting to the post and stuff. Yeah. And um, so, I mean, do you get to, like, are, are you just involved in the CG side of things or do you get to work with the um, handmade props um, as well? So um, I'm a, like, concept artist. So, like, I don't actually make stuff, like, by okay. hand, but um, it's basically, like, the visitive artist design stuff and then they either make that in, like, stop motion style, like, you know, actual plot props or... Sometimes the backgrounds are CG. So yeah, like those get translated to both sides, yeah. Sounds amazing. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the school that you came from? And mm -hmm. um, do you like, did you feel adequately prepared when you made that big jump into the industry? Because I mean, that's a pretty scary thing, right? To go from being a yeah. student to a full-time adult. How did you find mm -hmm. that? Yeah, but um, actually, yeah, at Ringling, like we went through, like, like, as I said before, that I went through like all the storyboarding, visual development, and then like CG, like from animating to, you know, rendering and texturing and everything. So um, it was great to know like each pipeline. So like, even if I'm not doing that right now, like animating and stuff, uh, it's good to know like what this design become like you know in CG. So um, yeah, I I felt like pretty prepared after Ringling. Like it was a lot of work, but it was like all worth it. And the I really enjoyed the experience at the school. Oh, that's so good to hear. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean, I'd love to just hear a little bit about your rookie century itself. So mm -hmm. um, for the viewers watching, um, hopefully you saw. It. A fantastic entry. What I might do is I might just pop some images on the screen in the background as we talk. But um, first of all, what, what made you enter the Rockies Awards? Oh, so um, at Ringling, like I've seen a lot of like upperclassmen actually submitted their film to Rookie Awards, and so that's how like um, I got to see all the entries and you know like. Um, the entries at Loki's are like all really inspiring. And so that really made me want to try with my film too. And mm -hmm. also like um, the people who interviewed with you last year, they were like my friends or like my mentors that really? also like, yeah, it was really inspiring to see them like talking with you and yeah, sharing their experience. Oh, that's so cool. What a small world we live in. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, so, I mean, how about you, if you could just share a little bit about your entry and, um, I mean, just, I mean, like what inspired you um, and those sorts of things? Uh, so, um, as an inspiration of like the story, it really just like came with this like literal thought of like a mashup of death and travel agent. That was like a starting point. And yeah, <laughs> and then like, um, I also really wanted to deliver this like message, like um, that as long as like you're alive, um, you find a new joy or like purpose to live. Um, so that, came together and like actually like story kind of wrote itself. So um, yeah, and like in terms of more like style and like technical aspect inspiration. Um, yeah, I researched a lot of like, you know, Coco by Pixar and like Hotel Transylvania and stuff. Um, but at the same time, like I also wanted to make the design that doesn't exist yet. So it was like a lot of experiment, but still like, yeah, they are, uh, those films really made me like, or like really helped me to like, see the structure of like skeleton and how the rig works and stuff. 
um but yeah and um also like for animation um i struggle a lot with like death um acting because he has to be really like energetic and kind of aggressive and i didn't have that like energy <laughs> myself so like um as much as like i tried acting by myself um i ended up also like watching a lot of like movie clips and stuff um mm -hmm. to get the energy from like professional actors and so like one of the film i got most like like his acting uh got most inspired was like jim carrey uh in mask <laughs> oh, i <laughs> yeah. love that movie yeah <laughs> So like I got those like expression and energy and yeah combined with my acting in the end. It's incredible. I'm just going through the pictures now. The, mm -hmm. You know, beautiful. Um, so I mean, you said that you did all of this yourself. What was your yeah. what were your favorite parts of the pipeline? Oh, um, like for sure, like uh, since now I'm a visit artist, I enjoyed like designing all the environment and like how to make like the room kind of, you know, depressing while like other locations are a little more like aggressive or scary. Mm -hmm. So that was like my focus to like deliver those messages through the environment. But also, uh, yeah, like as much as it was like really hard process, I also enjoyed animating. Um, because like those two characters has a really like huge contrast and yeah, it was like fun to explore those personality. Um, I did all the animation, like as a smaller assignment before my thesis film, but it was like 10 to 20 seconds. So like, I didn't have enough time to explore the personality, but this time, like I really got to, you know, um, develop that character. So yeah, it was really fun process. It's incredible. And how long did this take you to develop this whole, from start to finish? Um, so, uh, yeah, um, at Ringling, we all like spend uh, about a year and a half yeah. on the thesis film and one semester for pre-production, like storyboarding and this step, and then entire senior year for uh, CG pipelines. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. I'm just lost in your beautiful artwork. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very, very impressive, Monica. Um, Thank you. Very proud. Um, so my next question would be, what advice would you give to someone entering the Rookie Awards? Uh, so um, I think it's just like my personal opinion, but um, like for me, as much as like, I wanted to try to enter my work to Rookies, like while I was working on it uh, during my senior year, um, I kind of like didn't think too much about it. Um, so I kind of focused on like making something I love and also like um, pushing myself um, until I feel good about what I'm working on. So, and then like, as a result, it was awesome that um, it got selected uh, for Rookie. But yeah, I think the most important thing for me it was that like to do something I really like, like I can enjoy working on it for like a year and a half. Like it's a long commitment. So I like chose the message I wanted to deliver and also like um, yeah, I was like passionate about. So I think, yeah, um, I don't know. As an advice, I think that like, don't worry too much about the words and like, yeah, do something you like and people would see it uh, when you submit that work. Now that's some really solid advice, Monica. I mean, I'm sure. Thank you. I'm sure people would really appreciate that. And, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they're inspired by your work to be able to want to produce something similar. So it's very, Thank you. very inspirational. Um, do you have a question? How, no, a lot of questions. <laughs> um, what, have you always had a love 
for 3D animation? Is that something that you grew up watching or? Um... Um, yes. And also it's, it's kind of interesting that um, when um, the, this career path actually like kind of suddenly came to my mind at the end of like middle school, it was like, in America, it's like grade nine, I guess that, yeah, um, it was like, I used to watch um, some 3D animations and like, you know, animation in general, but um, like it was when, yeah, in grade nine, um, actually my English teacher, she gave us this assignment that to watch like movies in English and uh, I was watching, I was choosing all the animation films just because the English was like easier to understand and or easier to listen to. And, but then like she saw my list of movies and she was like, oh, like you really like animation and um, like you like, you also like art. So it would be nice to work in the animation industry. And then she said it like really casually, but I took it pretty seriously and mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that gave me opportunity to explore that as like a career. So yeah, that was like the beginning of my like interest in 3D animation. Mm -hmm. um, and I can see that, um, I mean, obviously through your work, um, you seem to be really into the concept and the design <laughs> part of the pipeline. Thank you. <laughs> I can see that, um, I mean, through your drawings, you've got just such a wonderful sense of like a design sense. And um, even like, for example, this picture here, I can see you've been working through color palettes and designing the character and things like that. Where did you learn to do this? Was this self-taught or did you learn this at college? Uh, yeah, at college, um, although like Ringling was like pretty focused on like Shiji aspect, they mm -hmm. still had business class. And like, I met my teacher who really helped me like learn these, you know, colors and also like the shape language and stuff. So yeah, mostly in college. And also like I did my personal project to like do more designs outside of school too. But um, yeah, it was mostly at school that I got to learn all the fundamentals of designs. Awesome. No, that's, that's, that's great. Um, because like the fundamentals like that is just, it's often overlooked, I think, in 3D courses as well. So it's mm -hmm. good that you have been able to experience that. Because, um, yeah. I mean, design is everything, right? It's, um, it's the backbone for the whole film. So um, so if, if at all, how has the Rockies changed um, all your life? Or how, how has it sort of helped you um, achieve your goals and what, what you're doing now? Yeah, I think, like... Um, it's a kind of broad answer, but like overall, um, it really like gave me like confidence as I was entering the you know professional world because um, you know as I said the like all the entries at rookies are really cool and really inspiring. So uh, as I was watching that before I enter my film, so um, actually being able to. Uh, be a part of it this year it was like it really like gave me confidence that like I need it um, to like feel confident or like feel comfortable to work in the like you know working in uh, environment um, all right I think um, it might be a good point if I wonder if you could share your screen and um, yeah. show us some behind the scenes of your entry. Um, I know it's something we've all been dying to see and it's something <laughs> that's some, something none of us have seen before. So I think that'd be really good. Okay, uh, let's see. I'll stop sharing mine. Let's hope this works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you see my screen? Sure can. There we go. All right. You can see it now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, um, I think we went through these like character designs, but um, I think mostly uh, I would love to show 
some, uh, let's see. So, um, so modeling and rigging process. So, um, so this, so for modeling, like Norman started out like these, like the left corner, which um, looking back, like it wasn't cute at all, but then like, you know, it, it was really hard to realize that, um, you know, it's not working. Uh, so like, but fortunately, like I was able to get like a lot of feedback from my teacher and, you know, um, slowly got to this point now that like the, the left, like bottom left one, it was still like not pushed enough. And in the end, like I tapered more, you know, legs and smaller shoulders and stuff to like really push his character and shape language. That's like, uh, I wanted to make him like a tiered, tiered drop shape. So yeah. And then for death, it was also like, this was a test before the actual model and it was like too soft and uh, for his like aggressive and like assertive character that I needed more like angular shapes. So yeah, later, uh, so this was um, what Norman ended up, although like at this point, action was like a temp, but yeah, um, as a shape, yeah, I didn't change much from here. So it was a death. That's, I made it a little more sharper. So this was the, um, so I'd say that rigging was like one of the most challenging parts for me because like I wasn't able to use the normal human structure and his facial controls are all like made of blend shapes. So it was a like lot of figuring out and like you know, try and error. So like for this, I really didn't want to do close them so I basically like rigged everything like this, like uh, the sleeve is also rigged that I can control it by hand. And um, yeah, animating them was also a lot too, but at least like I was able to keep his simple shape and like control his live, uh, line of action by making everything as a rig. And these were like some facial controls that uh, I made both like eyeballs, uh, squash and stretch, and like also the eye sockets so that I can make him fully emote. And yeah, these are some like mouth shapes that um, even like his teeth, I made the blend shape so that like I can put the teeth inside and also like outside, like sticking out and stuff. So yeah, uh, these are the teeth ones. But yeah, um, so that was the rig for death. Um, yeah, his bottom part also kind of moves. And this was just like a blend shape test that to test out if they can like make full range of emotion. Yeah, and um, I did all these like really rough sketches of um, characters when I was animating because some part obviously like I wasn't able to act like, you know, being on top of the sword and stuff. So yeah, these were some like sketches for like swimming and spinning together and all that. Yeah. I will stop sharing. All right. That's incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was yeah, so thank incredible. you. Um well I mean from that, I've got a few more questions. And guys mm -hmm. in the audience, if you have any questions about that, feel free to pop them through as well. Um, so with the rigging, I mean, rigging and animation is a very, it's quite a difficult skill on its own. Mm -hmm. um, how did you find the rigging process? Um, was that challenging? Yeah, uh, I would say uh, it was like quite a lot of experiment because um, I did like 
at Ringling, we go through the rigging, you know, process uh, every year uh, from sophomore year. So um, I got to practice a lot before this, but it was all for human character or like, you know, um, with legs. So it was mostly that that was like really challenging um, because he really had a lot of different controls and especially for face, I couldn't use any like automated system because it was all messed up when he has like two separate parts for the face. So yeah, I did a lot by hand, uh, like sculpting and also, yeah, I don't know. It was like experimenting how everything connect together. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that would have taken quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Like, how long did it, would you would you, would you said it would have taken you to read one of those characters? Uh, but we needed like I would love to take more, but we needed to finish it in like two weeks or two weeks less. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, it was around that time because wow. um, we had like five weeks or so to like rig and also like do the blend shape test, mm -hmm. like those animation and also like starting layouts for the actual film and stuff. So yeah, I think it was probably two weeks for both mm -hmm. characters. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. I'm really glad that, you know, the school, <laughs> like a school such as that is pushing um, like you, that, you guys to be quick because I mean, mm -hmm. that's how it is in the industry. So that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, well, fantastic work once again. Um, so what does the future look like for you? Where, where can you see yourself over the next couple of years? So, yeah. Um, so yeah, like I said, from here, I will work as a prop designer at Leica now and, you know, have fun, keep run, keep learning there. Um, so yeah, it's just started. So I'm still not sure how everything will go from here, but I'm excited that I'm actually like working on the film now. And mm -hmm. yeah, I would love to like try working on like different types of animation. Like it's really fun to work on stop motion now and yeah, we'll see from here. Mm -hmm. But um, I think as a concept artist also that um, it's like kind of outside of animation, but as a passion project, I also want to learn about like children's book or like, you know, that kind of like different medium too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds amazing. It's good to have, um, you know, personal projects and stuff on our mm -hmm. side as well. Um, we have a question from um, Marcus in the audience. And mm -hmm. um, so he wants to know about uh, how did you define the style of the characters? So um, your characters mm -hmm. have a very unique style. You mentioned that you watched a lot of um, movies and stuff to get inspiration, mm -hmm. but I can imagine you know, developing those characters and getting some of those shapes. I know that with animation, you know, you have to combine the soft shapes with the hard shapes and knowing mm -hmm. where to put all of those um, to create that final design and especially make it consistent between um, mm -hmm. your character as well as death. Um, mm -hmm. How did you go about developing that style? I think, um, yeah, I really like thought about their personalities at first that Norman, which is a main character guy, uh, he, I wanted to make him like soft and he's like really sad man, but also like as a story, I think I wanted the audience to like him and feel, um, feel the emotion for him. So um, I made him more kind of approachable, like rounder design compared to death. So like it was, um, too much the like the world and like style of Norman and Des like uh, it's a really nitpicky thing but I um, like the size of the head and like also like size of the eyes that kind of stuff I tried to make it make those two characters pretty consistent when you look at it together so that you feel like they belong to the same world but the shape language wise he's really round and also like like those shape, uh, it's like a teardrop that's, right. um, everything is kind of downward for him. Okay. While this is like, um, everything is kind of angular and has a sharp edge. So, 
yeah, and to define the style, yeah, um, watching movies and like, I took a lot of inspiration from more stylist animation and a little more realistic ones and kind of found the sweet spot I liked, yeah. I think, um, thanks for answering that question. That's, mm -hmm. um, that's good. And so are these, so these are all iterations of Norman? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I started designing from Norman. So this was like a little influenced by his world. So like in these um, exploration, still like the style isn't defined yet. Um, there were kind of more realistic one and more cartoony ones here. Mm. So yeah, I went with the this one. yeah the middle one yeah. And they're all they're all so different as well and so diverse. Mm -hmm. but I, I can imagine you would have had a hard time <laughs> choosing yeah. which one to go with, right? Yeah. Uh, at first, I almost like went with another one, and but my teacher advised me that um, that guy is the saddest looking one so I'm like yeah cool <laughs> no, it, it, yeah. it fits the style really well and even yeah. um when you were telling me that your teacher helped you with some of the shapes and it's crazy how with this animated sort of style um how just little changes can really make all the difference you know you're talking mm -hmm. about how you tapered the legs and you made his belly a bit bigger and you tapered mm -hmm. some of the shapes in his head and you know animation is it's on first glance it's so simple, but the yeah. amount of design that goes into this sort of style is really quite incredible. And it's really good to see, like, you know, you develop this tear dot sort of shape and he's quite hunched over and quite sad. Mm -hmm. You've got those lovely curved lines, um, the flowing lines and everything. So very good. And Thank um, you. how did you settle on the color palette for this one? Um. It was like a little bit of, um, I think it was mostly like thinking of the contrast from the background in the end. Um, it was really kind of dark and uh, desaturated room that, um, well, in this one, actually, I, at this time, it had the jacket instead of sweater. And in the end, I made it, uh, I changed it to sweater because it was like, easier and um kind of you know saves my time to sim everything but also it was like character choice too that um it was even more vulnerable and sad like he him going into like siberian stuff just with like sweater <laughs> um instead of like wearing jacket so yeah love it and it worked um... out yeah I wonder if you would mind sharing your screen again. I'd love to take another look at those turntables before we sign off. I have a few personal questions about modeling and texturing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, the the video? Yeah, yeah. If you could yeah. um, bring that back up again, because that was so interesting. So, Have a look. Uh, yeah. Here we go. All right. Yeah. Um, Let's do it here. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this is a bit of a selfish question for me because I'm a texturist. <laughs> but I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to know, how did you um, texture, shade and groom this guy? Like, what programs did you use? Oh, uh, I started modeling with uh, ZBrush and then, yeah, brought it to Maya. And I just use like Substance Painter mostly yeah. and mm -hmm. some ZBrush for like BAMP map, but yeah, uh, displacement. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like it was, I kept it pretty simple. And um, what I did more than substance was like putting those hairs for like, um, it was like, yeah, hairs on the sweater for Norman. Mm -hmm. So to feel a little more details, but still like keep this shape really simple. You said that's in substance. So is that a groom or is that just a bumpy texture you've got on there to look like fur? Like the, the, jumper, the jumper fluff. Oh, these ones. Oh, these are the like action. Oh, you see action. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. See, that's an that's a awesome level of detail. Like it just really Thank adds you. to it. 
Um, yeah, so you've so used X-Gen, X-Gen for the jumper and I assume mm -hmm. for the eyebrows and hair as well? Or... Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, nice. Um, so you, and what, yeah. what renderer are you using? Uh, I use Arnold. Arnold, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Thank you. What, so Marcus wants to know, during the project, what step was the most difficult? Uh, should I stop sharing? Yeah, it's up, it's up to you. I mean, like, it's, it's okay. all right to have that in the background. Okay. Uh, wait, sorry, could you could you repeat the question again? Yeah, yeah. Um, what what part of the project did you find most challenging? Uh, yeah, so, like, technical aspect, rigging was, like, the hardest part, uh, for sure that I, um, sometimes it was like a lot of struggle to find like really technical stuff. Like um, sometimes um, I wanted to make the eye, like eyeballs and eye socket for death really working, but um, somehow the squash and stretch isn't working or like, you know, whatnot. The kind of technical aspect, that was the hardest part, but also, um, yeah, I had a, lot of like struggle with animation too that yeah figuring out how to animate those things that I can't act out yeah that was a that was a challenging part <laughs> and um but yeah like in the end yeah using like sketching also helped and also like yeah for sure the reference but um with like sketching and um I was able to find how to depict that personality. Like for Norman, I kept the, like his facial expression, um, still like he can emote, but also like, for example, like when he smiles, he doesn't smile and like, you know, show his teeth and stuff that it's mostly just like a small smile because he, was still sad even at the end. So like, um, I didn't wanna make him laughing, you know? So yeah, that type of like character development, I thought of it a lot just with like sketching and trying to act out like many times. But yeah, that's how I ended up with Das too, like combining all the references. Um. No, I can imagine all of that would have been, yeah, incredibly challenging, um, <laughs> especially especially the rigging. I mean, I did a bit of rigging back in school, and mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's 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 tough, like especially if you're not coding and doing it all automated. So um, it's such a contrasting skill to um, the art, isn't it? Like the mm -hmm. technical versus the, yeah, um, yeah. And I think that's really impressive that you've managed to do all of that. So yeah, thank um, you. Was there anything, because um, we're almost running out of time, but the last mm -hmm. thing I was just going to ask about was um, how did you develop the sound for this movie? Yeah, so, um, so, yeah, I, I said, like, I was responsible for everything but except sound and mm -hmm. music. So mm -hmm. for, like, voice actors, there is a, some website that um, I can post, like, a part of the script and then, like, basically like audience, the voice actors who is online. So yeah. um, I got those like samples from a lot of voice actors and like hear everything, especially like for this, like um, the person I found, he can also speak French and that's why like yeah. uh, it was a perfect fit. And yeah, so like, and for Norman, yeah. Um, also that I listened to a bunch of people and the his energy felt right so yeah mm -hmm. i asked two of them and um basically like they act out in their sound room send me the file and for the music and sound I, it was done after my, um the animation was done so that they can uh, fit yeah. to the timing so i didn't like fit to the music they made it for yeah the animation Oh, okay. So you did the. So correct me if I'm wrong. So, but so you got the voice acting first. 
mm -hmm. then you did the animation yeah. and then you did mm -hmm. the actual music and composition afterwards to fit yeah yeah the video oh mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense yeah um, yeah it just fits so perfectly and it's, <laughs> you know, yeah like, especially like for boys it was even like helpful to get that before that because yeah. sometimes like yeah, for especially for Daz, like his energy sometimes influenced my animation too. Oh, cool! So yeah, it was really fun to animate for his voice. Ah, uh, that's um, it's so good to hear, and um, you know, it's obviously come together really well. And I'm I'm always so impressed by the um, the quality of the work that comes out of these schools, and as well, <laughs> like it's good that you know you're obviously receiving a lot of support to be able to achieve mm -hmm. something so magnificent, even the access to voice actors and um, yeah. music and things like that. I mean, that takes things to another level as well. So um, Marcus has just said, congratulations, beautiful yeah. work. And it's nice to see Thank people you. achieving their goals. And someone else has just said that's so impressive. So, um, Thank you. Yeah, so I think uh, we're going to leave it there for now. And um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to say, yeah, again, thanks for joining. And um, I hope um, I hope that, you know, anyone watching this is feeling as, as inspired as I am to be <laughs> able to. Um, I might go ahead and create my own little 3D animation now. You inspired me. <laughs> so, Thank yeah, you so much. All, all the very best with your future endeavours. And mm -hmm. uh, feel free to reach out if you ever need anything. Um, the rookies crew are always here and i um, happy to help in any way so that's awesome yeah. thank you so much no worries um so what we might do is i'm just i'll switch off and then i might just go ahead and play the animation one more time um in mm -hmm. case you missed it at the start and um yeah have a lovely day or night everyone see ya yeah thanks thank Monica. You. see ya <laughs>
New York, Egypt, Sapuku? How about Rocky Railway? Beautiful, majestic, breathtaking. You ready? Oh, just imagine the splat. Here we go, here we go! No, I don't want to die! No. I want to live. I think I... I think I want to see the world. Oh, well, if you change your mind, call me anytime. Thank you. Have a good life. <laughs> 